Well, I'd just like to say hello, everybody. And I, I'm so pleased to be able to do this with you. I'm sorry I can't be there in person because uh, the wee hours, that's, that is after midnight, is just beyond me, as Karen and Wendy well know. <laughs> having to miss several Sunday evenings. But I'm delighted that you're going to be discussing Tom's book. It was a great pleasure. In fact, it was more than that. It was just life changing for me. When I met him at one of his talks back in about 1993, I was totally blown away. Everybody had said, oh, physical mediumship. Nobody does that anymore. It's old hat. We need the mental trance discussions from spirit. We don't need it. It's the lowest of the low. Well, Tom's talk opened my eyes. It was amazing. I couldn't believe of the things that he said he'd seen. And he showed us photographs as well. Well, it was only a matter of weeks before he got an invitation to go to Scotland to do his talks. And he said, oh, I can't drive. I can't drive all the way because he lived down near London then. And he says, I can't drive that 400 miles to, to do talks. So I said, well, I'll drive and, and be with you. Then, then I can set things up. And that's how it all started. And from there on, eventually we were together and we married in 1998. But in those time in the 1990s, we travelled widely throughout the UK and it was just an eye-opener to, to, to meet the different people and their interests and know that this wasn't just something in the past. There were circles going on all the time, all over the place. There were still physical mediums out there and uh, it was, wasn't very long then. I think it was about a year before Tom was able to get me an invitation to sit with Stuart Alexander and sitting with that well the spirit just welcomed me in fact white feathers opening words to me was hello we know a lot about you <laughs> scary what do they know <laughs> what's going on but from there on i was introduced to experiments to sitting with them to holding stuart's hand which was then released from the bands and we did so much but this is really about tom's book because Tom he published a tiny book in 1989, and it's this one, Visits by Our Friends. And I had an email just three days ago where a friend, somebody who was in touch with me, had been sent one as a copy. And he said, I fairly enjoyed it. I said, what do you mean by fairly? He said, it's too short. I said, well, you need to buy the extended book, Life After Death, Living Proof. That is what Tom had always wanted to do. But at the time, he wasn't able to afford to, to, to do a long. And so he, he got that out to sell at his talks. And it wasn't until we, we moved to Spain in, in 2000 that he then found he had time because we weren't constantly touring, doing talks and recording, re-recording the Leslie Flint tapes because uh, we had been left a whole collection and we had permission to, to send those out to, to different people who, who came and asked. And that took up a lot of our time. But as I said, with the book, it was a chance to go through all the old notebooks, these, this little one, the first one, which was his old army note. And in it, every week, he recorded his notes. When that was full, he went on to a larger one, this one. And for just over two years, he gave great detail. After that, the details less because things happened to be the same. They recorded, but the memories still stayed. And this meant that he could recall everything so clearly because he said it just never went away. When he told the story of Aunt Ag, his, his aunt, putting carnations into his hand, she was materialized, but the carnations were physical. And he put them in his hand and said, for you, for you. Every time he told that story, his hand finished up, seized up because he felt the emotion so much and he hung on to those carnations for the rest of that sitting before <laughs> being able to release them. And the same thing happened. It, it just meant so much that he was able to tell everybody of the things that were possible, things that people had thought were, oh, yes, they're just tales. 
but no, it was it was there. Now, there's, there's one other story, one little piece about the books, I must say. It has a little notice on the corner that says revised. And that was because after publishing it in 2005, Tom, two years later, contracted pneumonia very suddenly and was rushed into intensive care in, in a Spanish hospital. Excellent care. But it happened to be the weekend of the Cobra Hill meeting with Stuart Alexander, and about 90 people would be there. And so I thought, I must ring Stuart. I must ring June and Alf and say, please, when you open the session, can you send healing to Tom? He's so desperately ill in hospital. That night, I was with him in the hospital, and he was out of bed just having a tiny bit of soup. He could, he, he could hardly manage anything. And suddenly he said, I've got to get back into bed. I must get back into bed. He got back in. And as I moved to the end of the bed, we felt the energy pass straight through me and to him. He acknowledged that he felt something and fell asleep. That was Friday night. On Tuesday afternoon, he was back home, completely free of the pneumonia. It was just amazing. But as in, we tell you in the book, this is why we had to rewrite the book, because he said, we must add that. This is so important. This is now. And this is why we did it, because I have that healing. But Tom wasn't the only one, because Sean up in Glasgow had been in a car accident, or a motor accident, and was very seriously ill in hospital, said he would never walk again. And another lady who should have been at Cobra had been rushed into York with suspected cancer. It turned out in the end all they could find was colitis. But all three of them felt that energy and recovered. So this was just something to do. But of course, by then also, I don't want to go on for too long because I know you want to discuss it. Professor David Fontana felt very close to Tom when he met him. And he supported us all the way through. And then in 2004... He in introduced us to Annabella Cardosa, who was a great, the, one of the world experts in ITC, a wonderful, wonderful lady. And he persuaded me that, to edit the journal for her. Now, in those days, it was in three languages. So I had fun and games doing it in Spanish, Portuguese and English. But she was able to provide me with an excellent piece of software, a professional publishing programme which meant now I could add lots more photos and set everything up properly. And this was the result. The, the publishing company, Saturday Night Press Publications, uh, was just originally Saturday Night Press. When Tom produced his little yellow book, he had to think of a name so that he could have a set of ISBN numbers to get it published properly. And uh, he took the name because... The original circle had always been known as the Saturday Night Club because they met on a Saturday night. And Spirit said it wasn't for research. It wasn't for people to test and do everything. It was just a meeting of family and friends. And so it was treated like a club. And that was then. So he decided he would use that to publish his little book. And when we set now then on his big book, we, kept, we revived the number and he used one of the ISBN numbers that was still available from the 10 he'd had to buy. So that is the, that's our, um, how it came about. Mm -hmm. We added the publications bit as well because it wasn't just press. Uh, we were able to get a copy made of the uh, Christmas party sittings, which was a, the Christmas party seance, when, when, which was done in 1954 and they uh, recorded people speaking through the trumpet. Now, we all know what a trumpet is, but I'll just show you one if you can, if I can get it all on the screen. This is an aluminium trumpet from the 1930s and was used all the time in Tom's circle. So you hear on the CD, you hear people speaking through that trumpet. And not only that, they then had materialized people speaking. And, for, and we were able, through Tom finding someone who could transfer it from the large seven inch reels to uh, a cassette. And then we were able to make it from a cassette into a CD and have it reproduced. So we were able to sell that and people can still buy it and, and listen to it. And some of the voices are so clear. It's just amazing. And the chat that goes between them, between the people in the circle and the spirit is just wonderful to hear.
So that, and of course, a DVD of Tom giving his talk. So we expanded and th that has been my work. He decided that he, I had to be trained in a way. Well, training just meant listening to the talk hundreds of times <laughs> and then working with the book until he said, I think you know more about it than I do because I went through the diaries so many times and uh, I said, oh, no, we've got to add this bit. We must add this bit. And so the revised edition finished up about 50 pages longer because I added so much more. But and it's still it's it's, it's so good to have it available. The, the, what the lovely thing is, is that the company I work with, Lightning Source, is part of Ingram's. And so it's a worldwide company. So I have I, the books can be printed in Australia, in America. Uh, it goes out through their global network to Brazil and India and everywhere else, as well as in the UK. The only thing we say is that some of the places far, far away, if they want to order through me, they'll need to write in because the postage is so much different and we can only do the UK one. But um, it, it's lovely because I, I, I make friends all over the world. Mm -hmm. And about a month ago, I sent four books out to Malaysia, to an, an Australian who's living there and uh, has, he's really interested. So he's, he's got four and he's trying to make everybody well aware of, of what's going on. Anyway, enough. Ten years ago, on the 23rd, Tom started on the next stage of his journey, the next stage of his life. And after having a, a severe fall one evening, um, he, uh, he passed away in hospital in England, fortunately for me, because otherwise it would have been much more difficult in Spain, and uh, left me to carry on. I was only in our circle, but with Stuart, with Scott Milligan, with David Thompson, with Kai Muga. I sat with all those mediums and had wonderful times with them. If you want to know what he was up to for four years after he passed, it's in there. He came through dozens, dozens of mediums uh, and in many, many different ways just to show it is possible. It's still possible. And so, yes, so all my, a lot of my stories in there, but there are still more to tell. Anyway, enjoy your session. And I thank you so much for allowing me to speak.